Well, hey folks, uh, this video is, let's see, it might be the fourth video in a series of videos about vectors. And we're starting to get into vectors where we're going to have to start drawing things out. Um, and this is one of those, okay? So we're going to come up with, uh, in this video, we're going to be asked often, what is, what are the horizontal and vertical components of a vector situation? Okay, um, let's start by looking at this question and drawing it out right now. A race car, it's driving 200 kilometers per hour in the direction north 55 degrees east. And this form right here is called quadrant form with direction. And it is a video that was previously done. So hopefully you've watched that one if you're confused by this, okay? So draw a diagram of this and determine the magnitude of the horizontal and vertical components of this vector. So let's do that right now. It's going north 55 degrees east. Okay, let's start by drawing our uh, quadrants here. Now we know northeast is going to be in this quadrant right here. Um, this 55 degrees right here is the degree that it uh, 55 degrees, so that would be, you know, 45 would be here, so 55 would be, you know, right about there, let's say. And it doesn't have to be exact, but that's our 55 degree angle. And with quadrant bearing, you always draw the angle next to the vertical line right here, okay? It's never this, it's never between the horizontal line and this line, this vector that we've drawn. Okay, so what we do is we uh, look at what other information we've been given. Here it is. It's going 200 kilometers per hour. 200 kilometers per hour. We'll write it right here. That's how fast that car is moving. Okay, and in this question it says, what are the horizontal and vertical components of this vector right here? Um, you could choose to draw this. I'm going to draw it like this. Here's the horizontal component of this vector. It's the distance that this that this line is right here and here's the vertical component right here. If you wanted to, <clears throat> you could have drawn it from here to here and here to here like that as the horizontal and the vertical. But then you'd have to say, well, this is 90 degrees and then you'd have to say this is 45 in here. Sorry, 35 in here. So we're not going to do that in this case. We're going to stick to my original. There we go. We're going to stick to this. So we're going to figure out what these are. And to do these right here, we're going to need, because this is a right triangle, and because we're given a degree in this corner, we're going to, and this is the hypotenuse of this right triangle, we're going to use uh, the kind of trigonometry that maybe your teacher taught you, that Sokatoa type trigonometry the trigonometry of right triangles. Okay, so in this case, if we're trying to figure out, let's say, whatever, what do you want to do first? Horizontal or vertical? Well, let's go in the order that they asked. So let's do horizontal first. Just remember, if you are standing right here, and if you have your arms out, your arms are always going to touch the hypotenuse, and your arm will always touch the adjacent side. So that tells us that this side over here is opposite from where we are standing. Okay, that's the way I get my students to remember which is the opposite side, which is the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. So what we're going to do here is say, okay, opposite, we've got hypotenuse, we're going to need, that's opposite and hypotenuse, we're going to need sine. Okay, on your calculator they don't write sine, they just put S-I-N, which we often joke about, but anyway, it's sine 55 is equal to What's the opposite again? It's x. What's the adjacent? I'm sorry, what's the hypotenuse? 200. Um, my students use a quick method when they do these called the Zorro method. Again, that's another video I have. <laughs> it's, and we just put a 1 under here. And the idea is that you start at the x and you go across, diagonal, and across. You multiply the first two things that you meet, so sine 55 multiplied by 200, and then you divide by the number at the end. In this case, it's just 1. Okay, so I'm going to take a calculator here, 
and quickly type this in sine 55 there it is make sure your calculator is in degree mode or it won't work times 200 and we're not going to divide by 1 like we normally would because 1 doesn't change anything so whoops I was going to do this in yellow so x equals this horizontal component here uh, where's our calculator there it is 163.8 we're just going to round it off to one decimal and we know that's kilometers per hour just like this red line here was kilometers per hour so this is 163.8 kilometers per hour okay that's the horizontal component now let's do the vertical component and uh, here I'll erase this line here so that we have a little more room to work and I'll get my yellow pen here let's do the vert let's call this Y and we'll do the vertical component so remember Y is at the adjacent spot and again we have let's use our original 200 kilometers again so let's use cosine because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse so cos 55 is equal to Y over 200 and then we're going to do that thing called the Zorro method it's a cross multiplication done very quickly so you just start here you go cos 55 times 200 divide by 1 okay so let's do that right now it's cos 55 times 200 and we get 114.7 kilometers per hour. Okay, so y is going to be 114.7 kilometers per hour. So that is all we had to do in this situation. This is the vertical component and this is the horizontal component of this vector that we drew right here. Okay, let's move to the next question. Determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector to mo below. Okay, the resultant vector, that might be a new word, the resultant vector, I'm going to draw it in right now. Hmm. I'll draw it in with a, let's see, I'll use green. The resultant vector is always drawn from the beginning. So you start at the beginning and you draw it until the end. That is going to be our resultant vector. When you have two forces, like the ones shown here, we have force u, or vector u, and vector v. When you put those together, head to tail, which we're going to talk more about actually in the next video, talking about how to draw these out, because there's two methods that your teacher may have taught you. Uh, this way right here is the way I prefer, but there's another one called the parallelogram me method, and then you connect, you know, from the beginning to the end. You end up getting the same line. That's why I don't find it worthwhile drawing that, the extra lines. But anyway, what we're supposed to do is figure out this thing here in green, which is our resultant vector, okay? I'll just put that little line above it. We'll call it vector x. Um, so how could we do this? Well, we know this is 40 and this is 60, and here we have a degree of 38 degrees. It would be really good if we could figure out this angle in here, because then we could use trigonometry to figure out the length of this line right here. So let's start by figuring out this angle right in here. Now remember, this is 180. A straight line is 180, okay? And you can do it in your head or take a calculator. What's 180 minus 38? Say it in your head. 180 minus 38, you should get 142. Okay, we have enough information now to figure out this line. Regular trigonometry will not help us here. We're going to need something called the cosine law because the cosine law is useful whenever you have an, a side, an angle, and another side surrounding that angle. Okay, so let's do that right now. Let's use the cosine law. So what you do with the cosine law is, well, we're looking for this, so really, I don't know, I'm just drawing this as our symbol. It's squared in this, the cosine law. What we're going to do is take the two sides. You go 40 squared plus 60 squared. And feel free to watch the video on the cosine law if you're confused by this, okay? 
minus 2 times the exact same things again, but this time not squared. And then you go cosine of the angle that is across from the, one, the side that we're looking for, the angle that is opposite the side that we are looking for, which is the only angle given. So it's cos 142. Okay, so to do this on a calculator, what you can do is just say, okay, 40 squared plus 60 squared equals, I'm just going to write that down, it's 5200, 5200, minus, now I'm going to multiply all this out, and I'll put it in a bracket, okay? I'll multiply all this out. So, 2 times 40 is 80, 80 times 60 is 4,800, just to prove it. 2 times 40 times 60, it's 4,800, times cosine, 42, cosine of 142. You get negative, okay, I'll let me write it down here. Negative 3,782 Sorry about that 8 there, but I had to do it. You know why. You saw the little line. And I'm just going to include two decimals here, 0.45. Okay, now I put these together. And remember, when you're subtracting and you have a, you're subtracting a negative, you're going to end up adding these two numbers. Okay, so let's do it really quick. 5200 plus... 3782.45 and we get 8982 and 45 0.45 okay now that is almost our answer but we have to remember we had a squared here to get rid of the squared we have to do the opposite of squaring which is the square root okay to get our final answer what we're looking for so let's do that. Um, I just need to find the square root of this. That's going to be easy. Just push the square root button. 94.8. I'll just round it off. 94.8. And in this case, the units were newtons. Okay. So we've just come up with we've just come up with the magnitude. Okay. So this is. Let me just point to it. This is the magnitude that we just found. So now we have to come up with the direction. Well, the direction is always, what angle is this going? What angle is this going? If I were to draw a little Cartesian plane here. So we would like this angle right here. We would like to know this angle right here to give us the direction that this resultant vector is going. The only problem is, we don't know what this angle is right here. If we knew this angle, we would just say 90, subtract this angle here, we would know this angle. So we have to find this angle right now, okay? Now again, uh, we could use, let's see, should we use the sine law or the cosine law? Well, I guess we could use the sine law just for fun. The cosine law would also work because we know all three sides. So this is assuming you know the sine law and the cosine law. Just for fun, let's use the sine law here. Um, so we're trying to find this side right here. Okay, so I'm going to call that sine, I'm going to call it A. And what, what is the partner, what's the side that is opposite this one? It's over here, it's 60 newtons, okay? And now we need a side and an angle that are opposite each other. So over here we have 142, which is the only angle we really know so far. So sine 142. And what is the side that is across from, from 142? Well, it's this that we just found over here. It's 94.8. Okay? So here's the sine law. What we're going to do is... Remember that Soro method we just did on the other page? Um, you can do that here too. You can start at the part that you don't know, just like before we started with X, and you draw like something that looks like a Z. 
the first two things you meet, the sine 142 and the 60, you multiply, then you divide by 94.8. And that's the idea of how to do what's called the Zorro method. So sine A will equal, and let's do this right now on a calculator. I'll move it over so we can see what we're doing. So the sine of 142 multiplied by 60, and now we're going to divide by the number at the end, 94.8. And you get 0 0.38965. Doesn't really matter how many you write down because we have to do one more step. If you remember, in trigonometry when you're looking for an angle, you're going to have to hit a button that will look something like this, that will turn this into something like this. We need that little negative one showing. On this particular calculator, I have to hit this button. Okay, so I'm going to take this answer, I'm going to hit this button, and there is sine right here. I don't know if you can see it, I'll zoom in on it if, you, if I have to. And I'm going to click this button, and I get 20, I round it off to 23 degrees. Okay, so we now know this angle here is 23 degrees. But the important part here was we wanted to know this angle here. So if you just go 90, 90 degrees, minus 23 degrees, what do we get? 67. So the angle we were looking for here is 67 degrees. So if we were doing uh, a true bearing, we would say the uh, the force is going 0, 6, 7 degrees. That would be the true bearing. If you were talking about quadrant bearing, you'd say north 67 degrees east. Okay, but that's just direction. And now we would also have to mention the magnitude at a magnitude of 94.8 newtons. Okay, so our answer would have a sentence, something that would include this at the beginning, talking about direction, and the magnitude being 94.8 newtons. Okay, so that's using trigonometry to solve these kinds of problems with vectors. I don't think there's any other questions on this video, so let's just leave it there for now. Hope you have a good day. Thanks.